NPR. Take, take it away on your article. Yeah. Uh, this happened very recently. Uh, so the title of this one is ICE continues to release asylum seekers at public park in El Paso, Texas. Excuse me, what? For the third day in a row, immigration and custom enforcement officials released hundreds of migrant asylum seekers at a park near a bus station in downtown El Paso. What? So essentially, um, typically with ICE, they, they tend to have uh, a bit of a communication channel with like the local shelters in Texas. So these people have come across the border. They have their um, asylum claims and they have to be processed by immigration judge judges, right? And it's a very backlogged system right now. And you can't just throw these people back across the border because most of these people aren't even from Mexico. Most of them are from Central America. So we have to properly process these people. Typically, we take them to shelters. You know, we like keep track of these people. They were just dropping busloads of these asylum seekers off at some park. I'm just saying good luck. And apparently this is somewhat tied to the shutdown recently. Um, that was gonna be my first question. Yeah, so an automatic email response from the agency explained all of ICE's public affairs office officers are out of the office for the duration of the government shutdown. We are unable to respond to media queries during this period because we are prohibited by law from working. So it's got to be somewhat related to the shutdown, but this seems crazy irresponsible to just drop these people off somewhere and say, good luck, uh, show up at your court date, see you later. What do, like what? What are we doing? So yeah, I, I, I don't I don't know. There have been a few, and I don't know the specifics. I'm generalizing, but there have been a few times where I've read articles in the Trump era where they challenged refugee entry somehow. I don't know if it was all refugee entry or, but they've definitely challenged the idea of because um, I think it's a UN statute that everybody that's a part of the UN, like if someone claims asylum, then you have to actually listen to them. You can't you just like sit. It. you have to process it. Right. Yeah. You can't just reject it. Um, so the Trump administration has fought against this a few times. I don't know the specifics, but definitely I would say that most of us can agree that they probably don't like the idea of having to process at least. Pro I, I bet you the Trump administration would rather just throw them on their butt right when they catch them back to where they came from and just say, OK, see ya. Like, don't try right. to come back in and keep doing that. <laughs> Um, and I don't even I don't even know if I'm wholly opposed to that necessarily. But um, we do live in this world where we're a part of the U.N. And if we're a part of the U.N. and we have to follow these laws, no matter how much you fight it, you have to do it. Um, then then you need to make sure the infrastructure is right. Like, how do how do I say this? Wh whether we agree or not that we have to process asylum seekers, the, the fact is that we have to. And it's already gone through the courts a few times them trying not to, which mm -hmm. ends up making the whole thing more expensive, right? If you were just processing it and you had the infrastructure in place and, and it was working kind of the way it should, it's a little more efficient. Nobody's getting held up. Nobody's had, nobody has to pay hundreds of thousand dollars to lawyers to fight things in court. If you just went with it because you knew you had to, it's cheaper than trying to stop it, being told to restart it, pay for the lawyers to fight it. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So like we can argue whether or not we should be a part of the UN. We can argue whether or not we should, um, there should be a law whether that saying that we have to process asylum seekers, but as long as we have to, then don't fuck it up. Like set up the infrastructure, make sure it's right. Like this, this whole, like this whole, I feel like a lot of these issues, Donald Trump tries to come in and, and throw a grenade as far as like, I do what I want. Um, and I get that there was a lot of frustration from people that elected him in office for stuff like that. Um, but a lot of times you'll find there's reasons why these laws are set up the way they are, right? Like, like we've been through things before and then the laws get set up because we've been through before and we saw the adverse action or whatever the fuck. Mm -hmm. It just, ugh. if you have to follow that law, then just follow it. Make sure you're doing it right. You know, because otherwise you're just paying for a bunch of lawyers. You're trying to stop the process, but then you're being told you have to restart it. And then that's probably chaotic. And then this probably happens because you have to process them. But then you go, holy fuck, we weren't prepared for this. Now what do we do? You leave them at a park. Which yeah, is just, a, which is just a really, really bad look. Of course it is. Right. And I like, especially when you leave these people just to fend for themselves. Yeah. Like, what do you think is going to happen? So there's that, of course, there's that stigma. And you typically see it on the right. We're like, oh, these are criminals coming over. These are people who 
are just right. here to, to hurt this country. But if you leave them just nowhere with nothing and they have to wait for a court date to be processed and have their case listened to, I mean, what? It's just weird. It's, it's so weird. So there's, uh, this, yeah. there's this paragraph right here. Typically, ICE coordinates with local shelters whenever the agency's processing centers are over capacity. But this time, ICE failed to contact them in advance and has continued to bust the mostly Central American immigrants to the public park, leaving them completely reliant on generous strangers who have been showing up in droves to distribute food, water, and blankets as temperatures drop into the 40s. What would these people do if p generous people weren't showing up? What would these people do? So incredibly unsurprising that people are willing to step up, though. People always do. I never worry about that. Too many people get caught up in, like, the boogeyman of some scapegoat. Their echo chamber is like savaging and mm -hmm. not that these are actual like real people when, when, you know, most of them, you know, so whenever people are, are hurting and someone finds out, I, I, I never worry about them being provided for. That's always good. You know, it's just the look. It's just so stupid. Yeah, but what if they weren't provided for as No, my, I agree. You know what I mean? What would yeah. happen? What would you expect these people to do? Dude. And I just feel like a lot of times we have conversations about stuff like this that don't look at the whole picture. Meaning like, no, you like, I don't know. You just, you, you'll get people that are like, well, okay, it's a bad look. I get it. But, um, why can't we just, why can't we just throw them back to where they came from? Like, why do we have to process them? That's the real problem. It's not Trump's fault, right? It's the problem is we can't just, well, look here, buddy, unless you have a way to pull out of the UN, which I don't even know what the process would be to do that. Or you want to change UN like international law, we're bound by it. And like, you can't just do what you want. Like, I feel you. Um, and by the way, if that is your end goal, then you're going to have to work through the system that we have. Like, you can't right. just throw the system on its head. <laughs> if you don't like the system, then work to change it. You can't just fucking do whatever you want. There's a system for a reason. Is that frustrating? I get it. Fine. It's mm -hmm. sure it's it is. It's even frustrating for progressives a lot of the time. So, it, you know, it doesn't matter where you come from. Like, it's it's frustrating, but it's there for a reason. If you want to change it, you have to do the right things. You right. I'm not, I'm hey, not advocating that we have to 100% take in all these people who come here looking right. for, uh, an asylum claim, but you have to process it and do it responsibly and then send them back to where they came from. If their asylum gets rejected, that's how it right. works. You could, but, but to just <laughs> release these people carte blanche into some public park in downtown El Paso Seems absolutely insane. Yo, also, listen to this from the, the article. Dylan Corbett, who heads a local aid group called Hope Border Institute, told NPR that one of the ICE authorities present at the scene, so I guess there, were, there was one at the scene, said, yeah. I have a heavy heart. I'm a human being, but I'm following orders. Okay, <laughs> following orders? So someone ordered them to just drop people off in the middle of nowhere. Yes. In a park in America. Why? Yep. Also, why are they just being let go in American towns unaccounted for? If they're not even citizens... Like, aren't they just illegals then? And you're just releasing them? Well, you're just <laughs> releasing them? <laughs> so as what far as I, as far as I understand, they've, they've been processed in the sense that, um, like they have a court date and then typically what happens is they get held in processing centers, like a place to stay while they're waiting on their court date or they'll go to local shelter. Right, Cause if they lose in court, they have to go back. Exactly. So, but then to just release these people. You you wanna, that's what I'm saying. If you wanna, <laughs> if you but wanna, you just release them. Right. Can you imagine being a new country? And let's imagine this. You don't speak the language. You have a court date in that country. You don't understand where the fuck you are. You, you don't, don't know the language. You don't, you don't have, have anything. And wait. you have to be at a court date. If you miss the court date, you're probably an illegal. Like, dude, what the fuck is going on? So that's what I'm bizarre. saying. That's what I'm saying. Do 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 I empathize with people who want to change the system, especially coming from the progressive mindset that I do on a lot of things? I do. Okay, but you can't, if you want to change the system, you have to play the current, at least the current game. You can't mm -hmm. come in there lobbing grenades. If you want to pull out of the UN, a lot of people would be shocked if a president actually wanted to do that. But if you want to, then go win the presidency and do it and make it happen. You know, that's the, that's the point. You can't just fucking do what you want. Then all of this that we've built is abs means absolutely nothing. It means fucking nothing. You can throw one grenade and be like, like, oh, oh, uh, president, it's in, it's written in the constitution. President's not supposed to do more than two terms anymore. Don't care, doing it anyways. Mm. Like, come on, yo, you can't just fucking do that. So, not yeah. that I'm worried about that with him, but God, I, I was just so gobsmacked by this. I was completely, yeah, like, it's just it's wow, just, it's silly. We have um, a broken system, then clearly.
Jeez, we have a bro though. we already had a broken system but what makes it worse is just the unorganized the unorganized manner in which the trump administration seems to go through things mm. um it's not a good trait to just fly by the seat all the time it's just not like it can be a good trait um in front of crowds it can be it can be even a good trait in tense negotiations if you know how to like think on your toes and really make things happen that is not what this is this is just they're unorganized all the time they just fly by the seat of their pants and by the way by the seat of their pants is by the seat of whatever the, whatever trump wants you know it's not even someone who's like informed this isn't like oh we're flying by the seat of neil degrasse tyson's pants nope we're flying by the seat of donald trump's pants oh my god hang on <laughs> You better fucking hang on. It's going to get bumpy. <laughs> Put your seatbelts right. on, ladies and gentlemen. 